All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about how to sell on Amazon. And I'm going to take you from beginner to expert because I'm going to explain every single step of the process along the way. And by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly what you need to do to take advantage of this opportunity that is Amazon FBA, this incredible, crazy platform that allows normal people like myself or like you to go out and basically sell normal products to millions and millions of customers around the world. So this crazy looking diagram that I have here on this screen that I'm gonna go through, this is basically a summary of everything that I teach within my full course, which is the FBA Freedom Accelerator. So that course is now running up to around about 22, 23 hours, something like that. And I'm gonna pack as much detail as I possibly can into this single video for you. And that's why you see so much on this screen. Obviously, if you then, after watching this, you wanna then dig down into the exact minute details of each of these steps, then definitely check out that course. That's gonna be the first link in the video description down below. And by the way, I will provide this entire diagram for you to download for free as a PDF. Um, that will also be in the video description below. So you can go ahead and click that, download it onto your computer, whether you wanna follow along or you can print it out on the wall or something like that. Um, but that's gonna be freely available for you as well. And don't worry, this is a bit of a big diagram at first glance, but I'm gonna break down every single step for you. Stay to the end and you're gonna understand everything there is to know about selling on Amazon. And most importantly, you're gonna be able to take this process that I'm gonna give you and then repeat it again and again to build up this business of profitable products that are making you cash flow. And here's the kicker, here's the real kicker with an Amazon FBA business. Once you've done that a couple of times, once you've followed this step-by-step -step process, you're gonna be able to take that cash flow, which you're now making from those profitable products that you launched, you're gonna be able to take that cash flow or that money and start hiring out or outsourcing individual parts of this process. And I'll talk about these parts, again, breaking them down step-by-step step as we go. That's basically how you can get to where I am right now, which is after three years of doing this, repeating this process over and over again, I have most of this outsourced and other people doing the work for me so that I have this basically well-oiled machine that makes me a lot of money and allows me to do the things that I wanna do. So without further ado, let's get into this. I'm, I'm gonna break this up into three sections. So first we're gonna talk about product research. Then we're gonna talk about the steps involved in sourcing and shipping. And then we're finally gonna talk about launch and ranking. And as well, there is an important part. There are a bunch of activities that you'll need to do that don't actually fit into either product research or the sourcing, shipping, logistics, or the launch and ranking. So I've included these separately here as other setup activities. And I'm gonna cover everything step-by-step from the start to the end. And by the way, a very common concern is, well, how much can I actually do of this process if I don't have enough capital right now to fully commit, to fully get started? Well, I can tell you that the product research part doesn't really require any money. So you can immediately start going at, away and doing some of these things that I'm gonna talk about straight after this video if you want. But the first thing that you need to understand, there are a lot of critical concepts to understand here, but the first one is product selection strategy. What you are gonna see a lot of, and this is gonna be very tempting, is to understand that there are at least two different product selection strategies. And you, as a beginner, I'm assuming that you're a beginner to this process, uh, you haven't done this before, you haven't, maybe even you haven't invested money in a business before, one of these strategies is probably gonna lead you to a lot of pain, it's probably gonna cause you a lot of trouble, even though it seems on the surface to be the best strategy. And I'm, I'm dividing these now into two. So we're going, talking about home runs, versus singles and doubles. And these revenue ranges can change a little bit, but basically if you see a product or a niche or an opportunity or somebody tells you that you can just launch this one product that's gonna completely change your life, I'm calling that a home run product. And I'm gonna basically divide that into around about 20,000 plus in revenue per month. And let's not even talk about greater than 50,000 per month. Let's just go within that range. Um, but that is a home run product. On the other hand, products that are making between $5,000 to $15,000 per month, I'm gonna call those singles and doubles. And this strategy of getting that single product that will just make all the difference for you, it's really tempting and it's a really bad idea. So please, let's avoid the home run products. Avoid anything that's between twenty dollars to $50,000 or more, obviously, in revenue per month. Now, I'm not just saying this to make things harder for you, I'm saying this to make things easier for you. The reasons why, and there are, there are a bunch of reasons, but the main reasons why, are, is that these products, they're just so competitive. They're very highly competitive. As well, when you do the maths in terms of how much uh, revenue this will be making, which means how many products are you gonna be selling to make that revenue, it's very, very capital intensive. And not only capital intensive in terms of the inventory that you need to make to actually sustain that amount of monthly revenue, it's gonna be very, very expensive to market those products. Firstly, to get them running, to get them ranked, which I'll talk about later in this video. And then secondly, to maintain that ranking as well. It's just it's a lot of money and therefore when you're putting in a lot of money it's a lot of risk and i know from when i was a beginner i know that it's scary to put money into things like this even as good of an opportunity as amazon fba is 
you don't want to take unnecessary risks. You want to control your risks and be in the game, but not risking everything for this home run product. So I really say that home run products are not ideal for beginners. They are obviously a good way to make money if you know what you're doing and you don't mind risking the money. Uh, but I'm assuming that that's not the case. So why are singles and doubles better? It's basically the opposite of what I just said. There are millions and millions of opportunities of, of great product ideas that fit into this criteria between 5,000 a month to 15,000 a month in revenue. There are almost endless opportunities out there. Everything that I said around the competitiveness of these more, uh, these high revenue products is reversed. Everything is less capital intensive. You're selling less units, which means smaller orders. It means less marketing costs. It means less ranking costs. So just take my word for this. Uh, you're gonna thank me later if you do this. It's easy to get into these markets. And remember, this is just your first product, okay? Everything that we're gonna be talking about is assuming that you're doing this for the first time. You can go ahead and launch into a home run niche in your second or your third product where you have more money, you have more confidence, you've gone through this, you know what it's all like. But for the first one, stay in the singles and doubles category. So that's the product selection strategy at a higher level. So that's roughly what you should be looking for and what you should be avoiding. And I've told you why. Next, how do you actually take that high level knowledge and then turn it into real research on Amazon? How do you start going and finding a specific product that you wanna sell in a specific niche? This is where you're basically gonna to need to outlay a small amount of money for one of these three fundamental tools. It's either gonna be Helium 10, Jungle Scout, or Viral Launch. These are just absolutely fundamental to do product research. Um, you can try and do it without these tools, but the cost to benefit ratio of just paying the $100 it is for Helium 10 or for whatever it is, $50 for Jungle Scout, um, honestly, you just need to get one of these tools right now. So pick one, even like we have all three. Um, I mainly use Helium 10 personally right now, but the fact is that all three are great tools. Jungle Scout was the first one. Helium 10, I think has the best feature set at the moment, but it changes quite often as well. What I recommend you do is go below. There'll be links down below for each of them. Um, again, if you wanna just pick one quickly now, I would go with Helium 10. Use the Nomad discount that you'll get through those links and just sign up and start using it immediately. So those are the tools that you need to get started. But what are you actually looking for in terms of a winning product? So given that this is gonna cover the entire process, I can't dive down into this, um, but I use seven key ingredients to evaluate what is gonna be a successful product versus what is going to be a losing product. Here are the seven key ingredients, and I'm gonna just list them briefly. It's demand, which is how much demand is there for that product or for that niche. Number two is competition, which is how many sellers are actually competing for that demand. Number three, and this is critical, is improvability, which is how can you step into the existing space, the existing niche or the existing products? How can you step in and make it better in some way? That is, how can you make the product more desirable to the people who are buying it? Or how can you even take a product that is desirable to a certain type of person and make it desirable to another person or another type of buyer. That's improvability, absolutely critical for Amazon FBA in 2020. Uh, number four is seasonality. So this is basically understanding what type of product is it? Is it something that only sells partially during the year? Is it maybe only during Christmas or is it only during summer? Or is there a particular month or a particular season where that product sells? Because it'll change completely your data if you're looking at something in the off season versus the on season. Uh, number five, Ipley or patents. I'm actually gonna talk about this in this video, um, but that's basically checking whether there are intellectual property liabilities or risks associated with the product or the niche. And patents obviously are something um, that you really don't wanna touch unless you know what you're getting into. I'll talk about that in, in a few minutes in this video. Number six is branding potential. This is not a must to have, this is a nice to have, which is once you have this one product that may be successful according to all of the other six criteria, can you brand it? Can you build it into something that is not just that first product, which may make you money, but how can you actually build out from there and attack or target rather a particular customer and sell more different products to that same customer? So that's branding potential. Again, it's not a necessity. You can sell one product that has zero branding potential and still do really well, um, but it's definitely a nice to have. And number seven is profitability. So that's calculating your numbers. That's knowing how much money you're actually gonna take home at the end of the day. Um, that all of these are quite in-depth topics. I would recommend for you to check out both of these videos. Both of these videos are nearly an hour long each and they cover the seven key ingredients. They cover the uh, product selection strategy and they also cover real case studies of me doing the product and niche research using Helium 10. So I'm gonna leave those videos with you for now, but understand that this is the process that you should be following when you're doing your product niche research. Get one of the tools, I recommend Helium 10. Evaluate according to these seven key ingredients. And if you wanna see me doing a real case study, then go through and watch both of those videos after you watch this one. 
That is the niche research or product research stage. I'm gonna stress this again as a second step in this process is that once you have found these niches using these tools, according to most of these ingredients, the most important part, and this is probably the single step where you can either gain or lose the most value, which is where you can either make or break your Amazon FBA business, is in the product improvements. It's where you're adding value. How are you actually making your products better? And here are some principles that I want you to follow. Again, I cover this in more depth in those two videos, but for now, and as a summary, principles you should follow. Firstly, ask yourself, why would somebody buy your product over the other products? Why would somebody choose you over your competition? If you have no answer in Amazon FBA in 2020, you are not gonna be successful. There is no getting around that question. The second principle, understand that there's no perfect product. Nothing, when you go through this process, you could go through it a hundred times, a thousand times, using Helium 10, following these ingredients. You're never gonna find something that just stands out as being the perfect product because the perfect product would be one that, you, that costs nothing for you to produce and allows you to make hundreds of thousands of dollars per month. It doesn't exist. Everything comes in balances and flows and there's always gonna be positives and there's always gonna be negatives, pros and cons. And what is more important is that when you're not looking for a perfect product, just understand that being 70% sure is better than being 100% sure because you will never get to 100% sure. You will never feel that certain about taking this risk. And if you wait for 100%, you'll honestly just never take that step. And the worst thing, the, the thing that I most wanna avoid with all of this as I'm teaching you is that I wanna avoid you from never actually getting to that final destination. I want you to be able to go through this entire process. It doesn't take that long if you you are dedicated, if you're willing to take reasonable risks and you're willing to be intelligent about it and work hard. All of this can be done in, let's say three to four months to start seeing success. So this will only work though if you're okay with being 70% certain, you're okay with taking a little bit of risk, that 30% of risk. And understand finally, the final principle I want you to understand here with the product research phase is that your first product is just an opportunity to learn. Yes, you could make a lot of money. I personally didn't get lucky with my first product. My first product made me about $20, I believe on a a $2,000 investment. So I'd pinned all of my hopes and dreams on that single product. I would probably not be here where I am today. But what it did allow me to do, that first product that made me $20 after months of effort and 2,000 invested, was that it allowed me to learn. It allowed me to figure out this process, which I'm now presenting to you. It allowed me to see what Amazon really looks like from the inside. And it was my opportunity to actually put skin in the game and actually do something. And I learned so much from that first product. And this is gonna be the same for you as well. Your first product may make you money, but it may simply be a learning opportunity. And both of those are incredibly valuable and incredibly necessary. So that really is the product research stage. Again, check out those two videos. They will go through everything in a lot clearer detail, I promise. Uh, but this this product research stage is probably where 60 to 70% of the entire value, the make or break part is right here. It's in, it's in the product research stage. Do not skip it, do not take it lightly. Make sure you watch all of these videos, you understand what there is that goes into this. And again, the key questions or the key part here is improving the product. It's why would somebody buy your product over the rest? If you can't answer that single question, none of the rest of this is probably gonna help you. That's product research. It might take you a week. It might take you a few days. It might take you a few months. That's okay. Just remember these principles. You're never gonna be certain. You're gonna have to take this step eventually. So just don't be afraid to take it when it comes. One last thing I forgot to mention was budget. So I haven't put in a specific figure here and I would prefer actually to cover this in detail in a separate video covering exactly how much you need to pay for everything along this entire process. And I'll break that down step by step. Um, But I'll only do that if you want me to do that, if you want this question answered. So if you do, Now's the chance to leave me a comment down below and tell me that you want a video about how much it really costs to sell on Amazon. And I'll make that video for you if I get enough comments asking for it. So that is the product research phase. Let's move on now to sourcing and shipping. So I'm assuming you've found a, you've got the tools, you found a niche that looks good, you found a product idea, you've then gone and at least thought about product improvements and how to add value to that product so that you can answer the question, why would somebody buy your product over the rest? So you've done that. So we're now gonna look at sourcing and shipping. And there are two parallel threads that actually need to happen right now. One involves the Chinese manufacturer or the manufacturer wherever they are. That's what do you actually need to do to go from finding them or how do you find them in the first place to actually placing a PO, protecting yourself, doing everything correctly, making sure you're getting the best quality product for the best price in the best amount of time and making sure that everything gets done successfully as you wish it to and then shipped successfully into Amazon. That's one thread. 
And then the second thread is actually all the other setup activities that need to happen at the same time while this is happening. So I'm gonna cover, first of all, the supplier side of sourcing, and then I'm gonna go up here and cover all of this stuff as well. So we'll start with the uh, initial sourcing. And this is really, I'm making the assumption here that the product that you're gonna be looking for is best sourced in China. This is the case for probably 90% of all products that you'll be looking at. Um, and that's simply gonna be Alibaba or 1688.com, which is the local version of Alibaba. Don't be too scared to go and look for local or options outside of China, but just understand that there is a probably 90% chance that you'll be sourcing your product from China. Uh, so Alibaba and 1688 is where you wanna start looking. And in this case, it's just as simple as going onto Alibaba. I don't need to do a tutorial for this right now. Uh, you can go into it literally after this video and go start looking, just typing in product names and seeing what comes up. I am gonna tell you some principles that you should do when you're looking at this or things that you should understand in order to get to a successful outcome as easily as possible and with as minimal effort as possible. So what you actually need to do is contact many to find one, or in other words, you need to play the numbers game. And here's the thing that you may not recognize unless you've done some sort of negotiation or uh, negotiation training. You need to find your BATNA or always have a BATNA and BATNA stands for best alternative to negotiated agreement. And in simple words, it means have a second option, have some sort of alternative that you can turn to. So whether that is having three suppliers who can all supply the same product, or that's having an alternative product that you can source if you can't find a good supply for your first choice, whatever it is, you need to have some sort of secondary option because otherwise what you find is that you start getting desperate. As you go through this process and you keep getting further and further into it, if you just have one product, one supplier who can find that product for you, who can source that product, sorry, you're gonna get desperate. They're gonna start having bargaining power over you. They might not deliver things the way that you want them to. And to be honest, this product, you could easily get it all the way into the purchase order contract stage, and then something could happen to make it not work out. So if you have a best alternative, you have a second best option, you can always fall back on that second best option. Again, it may be another supplier to get the same product, or it may be a secondary product that you've been looking at, but it's only second priority. Always have some sort of best alternative. And play the numbers game. So you're gonna be contacting probably 20 to 50 suppliers, something like that. It's a large number, it's a numbers game, because what you need to do at every stage in this process is have something that you can compare to. You don't know whether pricing is good until you've talked to 10 suppliers and you've got 10 prices. You don't know what samples are good and what are bad until you've gotten multiple samples and you can sit there at home and look at them and actually compare them yourself. So play the numbers game. So that's initial sourcing, go on Alibaba, you can start contacting them. Um, next is you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be able to filter out very easily most of the suppliers that you talk to. They may have bad communication, they may have really bad pricing, they may not have the product you want or they may not be able to do the improvements that you wanna make. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna narrow it down to, I would say two to five suppliers. And again, ideally you wanna get around the three to four to five range. Um, they're gonna be the sort of shortlisted suppliers. Then you're gonna order samples from those suppliers and you should expect to pay $40 to $100, including shipping and pay that via PayPal. And what normally happens is they will send that sample to you via express air shipping. So it might take a week or a little bit less to get to you and have those in your hand. And here's a little trick. If you're looking at products on Amazon, buy the products from Amazon as well. So you know what the competitors' products look like, what they feel like, and you can compare them to the samples that you're looking at. This stage is very important. It cannot be skipped. Um, you need to feel those products because again, in Amazon 2020, the game is just too competitive to let things slip like not knowing what your product actually feels like in your hand. And I can tell you that there will be great differences in the product quality between two suppliers that may otherwise seem to be exactly the same get the samples, check them out yourself, test it exhaustively. And from there, from ordering those samples and comparing them, you can then evaluate those shortlisted suppliers and you can confirm who you actually want to get to produce your product. Um, that should be pretty self-explanatory once you get those samples. Then you're gonna go and with that final supplier, you're gonna make a purchase order contract and this is where you're gonna pay money. Now, again, jumping back to that question from before, up until this point, the only expense that you need to have paid is uh, let's say 100 bucks for Helium 10 for a month. So uh, you're $100 down so far, but now you're gonna be a lot more down because you're gonna have to pay a 30% deposit for the purchase order contract. So I'm gonna give you some pointers for this step. Uh, firstly, what's normal pr common practice is a 30% deposit, and that's generally paid via trade assurance or PayPal. With trade assurance, there may be fees involved, so your supplier may want you to pay those fees, and that is also normal or common practice as well. Um, the more important thing that you need to understand right now is that your purchase order contract 
While it's not something that you will ever be able to pursue legally, you're realistically not going to sue a factory in China. The, on, the contract is something that is generally honored in China. And so what you need to do is specify everything that you want specified in that contract in very clear language. So here are some things that you can use as a starting point. Who's responsible for the shipping? Is it you? Is it the supplier? Is it a freight forwarder? Who is doing that? How are they doing it? Is it air? Is it sea? What are the terms and how much is it going to cost? Uh, secondly, what is the acceptable production time? Is it 30 days? Is it 14 days? Is it 45 days? That should be in there as well. What is acceptable product quality? So what does it actually look like if there are specific measurements, if there are specific dimensions, specific materials, pardon me, those should be in the purchase order contract as well. Uh, number four, what happens if the inspection fails? And I'll talk about that in a second. If these other conditions aren't met, what then happens? What happens if the supplier doesn't meet their production time? All of these things should be specified because if you don't specify them now, you'll, you'll have to start arguing with the supplier when it happens or if it happens later on. So protect yourself by covering everything in the purchase order contract before you pay that deposit. If you're a student of the FBA Freedom Accelerator, then I'll actually just give you the purchase order contract that we use. It is airtight. Uh, it's the one that we've used for years now. We've never had issues. And if we had had issues, we've actually been able to deal with them systematically because everything's covered in that contract. Um, but you can also just use this as a starting point and create your own. The important part is that you're protecting yourself because now you're about to put money down on the table. Once you've done that, you've paid the deposit, you've uh, created the audit, purchase order contract, pardon me, and it has been signed by the supplier, you're good to go. You're, you're, congratulations, you're now in production. So here I'm actually gonna go back and take a step back and we're gonna look at the setup activities because as part of the production phase, you're gonna need some other things um, that we haven't talked about yet. So I'm gonna go back now, other setup activities. This is basically how we set up our brand, how we set up our Amazon seller account and how we set up our listing. So there are a bunch of things that need to happen. So let's go all the way back to product improvements. So this is where you had your product idea, you thought about how, what that's really gonna look like. And I'm calling this product design and brand name. So there are a bunch of things that you need to check now. And again, you can do this before you contact suppliers, you can do this while you're talking to suppliers, uh, and you can do this while you're actually finalizing the purchase order contract as well. Keep in mind, it's obviously best to do this as early as possible. So with the product design and brand name, what are the things that you really need to be checking? You first of all need to do a brand and trademark research. So whatever your brand is gonna be, you need to make sure that it doesn't already exist. Or if it exists, it can be in a poten potentially different niche, different country. But if for example, you have a competitor, a direct competitor, uh, brand A, and your name is just gonna be brand A as well, that obviously isn't gonna fly. So you need to go onto the United States um, trademark office or the European alternative, Google it as well, and just look in your niche and make sure that what you want to call your brand and have as your trademark is not taken. Next, once you've chosen your brand, it's okay. You're gonna, not gonna have any trademark issues. Then you can go for the Amazon IP Accelerator. And this is optional. You can do this prior to launching if you want to, or you can do this after proving the product profitability. But basically what the Amazon IP Accelerator is gonna get you is it's gonna get you a trademark in the six to nine months that it takes to get that trademark. But here's the important part. Generally, as Amazon sellers, we only really need that trademark or primarily we want it so we can get brand registry. That's gonna give us a lot of protection on Amazon from hijackers um, and from basically people who are gonna try and steal your listings and mess with your products. We don't want that, we wanna prevent that. And brand registry allows us to do that. Here's the hack, with the IP Accelerator, it only takes two weeks. If you don't use the Amazon IP Accelerator, it can take the whole trademark period, which is six to nine months to actually get that done. So you can do that now, you can do it later but definitely consider that as soon as you're ready to pay that money. The total cost will be maybe $600 all up. So that is the brand and the trademark research and then going through that process. Next, you're gonna do a patent check. Some products are not patented, some are, and realistically, the only way you know is by checking. So you can either go on Google patents or you can simply pay someone on Upwork or Fiverr to do it for you. Once you have confirmed that there are no patent issues, then go into the package design stage. And this is where you're gonna get your actual packaging design. And this is gonna be part of your listing images. It's gonna be part of your real product. Um, so this needs some time and care taken as well. You obviously probably won't be doing it yourself unless you have a graphics design background. So again, go on Upwork or Fiverr are my recommended options and get somebody to do that packaging design for you. So the packaging design file is one of the things that you will need to give to your supplier during the production phase. There's another one though as well. So let's take one more jump back and let's talk about creating our Amazon seller account. So I would recommend that first of all, you just create one that's an individual seller account that's free. And later on, you can upgrade to professional, which you will need uh, prior to your product launch and once you start running PPC campaigns. But that is $40 a month, so you don't need to pay it right now. 
So you've created your Amazon seller account. By the way, I also have a long in-depth tutorial about how to do that, which is the complete Amazon Seller Central tutorial. You can check that one out. And all of these videos, I'm not sure if you'll be able to click on this in the PDF, um, but I'm gonna provide links to all of these individual additional resources, because there are, I think, six of them. Um, I'm gonna provide them also in the video description down below, so you can go and check these out as you get to each of these stages. So you've created your Amazon Seller account. What do you need to do now? You need to buy UPC codes. And UPC codes are basically the source of the barcodes that you're gonna to need to be able to check your uh, shipment into Amazon later on. And we need to do this while we're getting the goods produced because it's much easier that way. Buying the UPC codes, uh, there is an alternative and probably better option. If you're brand registered, like I said back here, brand registry 2.0, if you have that, you can easily apply for GTIN exemption. And if that's the case, then you don't need UPC codes. Um, I'm gonna explain everything about Amazon barcodes and how that all works because there there's a bunch of confusing terminology in this video here, Amazon barcodes. So check that out. Again, link in the description or you can probably click this if you download it. Uh, that's what you need to do to get UPC codes. Once you have the UPC codes or the GTI exemption, you're gonna go and you're gonna create the Amazon listing within Amazon, within your Seller Central account. And from there, you're gonna generate FNSKU labels. Again, if you're not sure what that means, go and check out that video where I explain it. From those FNSKU labels, you can actually either give it to your supplier or you can even put them directly into the design AI file. It doesn't really matter, but either way, you need both of those. You need the packaging design file and you need the FNSKU labels. And there is one more thing we need for production and that is before shipment is we need to actually create the Amazon shipment within our Amazon Seller Central account as well. So from there, we create the shipment, generate the shipping labels, and then finally, we send the shipping labels to the supplier. So basically the FNSKU labels are going on every single product on the packaging for every single unit. Whereas the shipping labels, they're actually going on every single box or shipping box that your supplier is gonna ship the products in. So they need both of those things. So that's that for the setup. Let's get back to production. So remember you define the production time in your purchase order contract, and it could be 15 days, it could be 45 days. It really depends on what type of product it is that you're selling. Use this time to go and do all of those other activities as well as a couple of other ones, which I'll talk about in a second. But basically, you can have that time to not do too much really. But once you get to the end of the production phase, that's when stuff starts happening again. Now here is a mandatory step. Please don't skip this step. You need to get a pre-shipment inspection. There are a number of people who can do this. Alibaba actually has their own uh, preferred providers as well, which are fine, you can use them. But the important part is that you don't skip this. You do this, you get a pre-shipment inspection. And you're gonna wait until the inspectors go and they inspect your shipment before it gets shipped, before you've paid the money. And then you're gonna receive that inspection report and you're gonna read it. And you're gonna look at the photos and you're gonna take very, you're gonna pay very close attention to everything that it says. And if the inspection report fails, do not skip this part. You need to go back and get it done again or fix the issues until you're satisfied that the issues are fixed. Remember, according to your purchase order contract and the terms that you defined in that contract. This will really cost you a lot of money down the line. If as soon as you start letting shipments go that haven't been checked and that aren't up to your standards, uh, trust me, you will have a lot of pain down the line. So I'm telling you this now so that you can uh, avoid that problem because I've, I've had it happen to me as well. So you've maybe done that once or maybe it passed the first time, then you're okay to make the final payment. So remember, this is the other 70% of the purchase order contract. And you're probably gonna pay via the same method, whether it's trade assurance or PayPal. Now, as an FYI, if you are doing this many times with the same supplier, uh, it is common practice to just do a bank transfer, but if you can get the protection with PayPal or trade assurance, particularly for a new supplier, definitely do that. Once you've made that final payment, the supplier or whoever is responsible for the shipment will then arrange the shipment. Now let's jump back again because we're up to the shipping phase. So let's make sure that before we can activate our listing and actually launch our product, there are a few other things we need to look at. So let's go back. And let's go back up to these other setup activities. So we've got our samples and everything. What we need to do now is product photography. So you can either use, there are, there are a number of ways of doing this. You can either use uh, your samples and get them done locally, wherever you live, where the samples are with you, or you can do this in China. You can get your samples sent directly from your factory to a Chinese photographer, or you can ship the samples from wherever to wherever you want, basically. But you need to find a photographer and get those photos done. Once you have the product photography done, you're gonna turn them into listing images. Um, and what you need to do is populate the listing content. So this is gonna go back and we're gonna be using, again, one of those three fundamental tools. And again, I recommend Helium 10. You could use Viral Launch or Jungle Scout to do the keyword research to fill out your listing content. 
not only the keyword research, but you're actually gonna to need to do copywriting as well. And that's gonna be filling in the bullets, filling in the description, filling in your enhanced brand content if you have that, and potentially also adding words and texts and effects um, to your listing images. Uh, this is an in-depth topic, but I'm just gonna say here, it's gonna be the benefits, which is how it helps your customer. Those are gonna sell a lot better than the features, which is what your product is or what it has. So focus on benefits, use features, but only in, only enough to explain the benefits. Okay, so you've populated your listing, your shipment is on its way to Amazon. You're almost ready to activate the listing as soon as it arrives and to launch. Now this is the final phase that I'm gonna be talking about. And it's probably the most exciting one as well. Before you went through the sort of hard part of trying to find a product, of going through this fear and, and trying to find the confidence to actually commit to a particular product, you do all of this work with suppliers, improving your product, you've created a brand, you've done all of the legwork basically, and you've paid a significant amount of money. And now you're ready to actually hopefully see this starting to pay off. So this is the launch and the ranking phase. And let's cover this so that you know step-by-step step how to sell on Amazon from zero where I started to finishing a successful launch. It's really hard to describe how good it feels to nail a successful product launch, to get that product ranked, to start seeing that first amount of money coming in, those first sales, knowing that eventually you're making profit, potentially it's after a couple of weeks, after a couple of months, but the profit's there and it's just a really good feeling. So at this point, you should be starting to get pretty excited, maybe a little bit nervous as well as normal, but definitely getting excited. So let's get into it. Let's talk about what you need to do to launch and rank your product on Amazon to finish this video. Firstly, let's go back a little bit and talk about keyword selection. So you're gonna to need to select some keywords to rank. You've done most of the legwork already because you already did the keyword research when you were populating your listing content. There are two principles that I want you to think about when you're selecting these keywords. Firstly, what can you actually afford to rank? If you're trying to rank for a keyword that has a sales velocity or an expected sales velocity of 50 units per day, and let's say you ordered 300 units back there in the production phase. Those 300 units are gonna go very quickly when you're selling 50 units a day. It's gonna take you six days to stock out completely. And that will just completely defeat the entire purpose of doing this if you stock out that quickly. So don't, you in that case, you can't afford to rank for that keyword. You need to think about a keyword that's gonna be smaller volume that might get you five to 10 sales a day so that you then have time to go back and reorder. Think about relevancy as well. It's gonna be very important that the keywords that you select are the most relevant keywords for your product as long as they have reasonable search volume. So for example here, if you're selling a stainless steel coffee grinder, that is a relevant keyword that very accurately describes the product that you're selling. Don't try and rank for coffee because although it may have a huge search volume and you may try and extract you know, hundreds of sales per day, the fact is that people who are typing in coffee are looking for lots of different products and not just yours. You're gonna have a very low conversion rate, your ranking is gonna be very hard to stick and it's also gonna be very expensive as well. So think about relevancy and think about what you can actually afford to rank when selecting those keywords. So I'm assuming now that you've selected those keywords, let's start talking about activating listing and launching. So I'm gonna talk about the tactics first of all, uh, and I will draw your attention as well to two more videos, which are both about an hour long, both of these. These are both highly relevant to this part of the process. So again, check out my Amazon PPC tutorial, which I believe is the most viewed video on YouTube about Amazon PPC. Uh, and then secondly, also check out my product launch with zero reviews so that you understand a lot more of the thought process that goes into this whole, um, this whole launching cycle. So check those videos out, but let's talk about the individual components of what you need to do to actually launch your product. So the shipment's there, the listing's ready, it's all set up, everything's indexed. Here's some things to set up. Firstly, I would recommend putting on coupons, which are the little, it's the little box that you have where you provide you know, a dollar discount, something like that. But the key thing is with coupons is that they show up on the main search result page and it just gives you a nice little boost against your competitors. So I recommend setting up coupons early. It doesn't have to be a large amount. You can go the smallest possible, whatever it is to try and incentivize buyers to pick your product over your competition. Next, and this needs to be done in advance, is you need to set up or at least think about these review gathering systems. Reviews are absolutely critical. As I talk about in this video here, successful product launch with zero reviews, uh, go there for more th uh, more of the theory behind why reviews are important, but you need to get reviews somehow. So there are a couple of ways of doing this. You can get you can do nothing, by the way, and expect to get for every 100 sales, you might get one review, um, but it's much better if you do some of these things or more as well. I highly recommend you sign up for the Amazon Early Review Program. It costs around about 50 or $60, I think, per ASIN, and that will get you some of the first up to five reviews. It takes a while to get them and they're not always five-star reviews, 
but it's legitimate. It's, you're not gonna get in trouble with Amazon for doing it and it's pretty cheap. So I would just do that instantly. Um, so sign up for the Amazon Early Reviewer Program. The next thing you need to set up are email feedback sequences. So this is basically a series of messages that you send to your buyers. And in 2020, you need to be pretty careful about what you say in your email sequence. And in fact, a better technique than simply asking for reviews is to actually in those messages or those emails to deliver more value to your customers. And if you can do that, you'll actually get more reviews as sort of reciprocity. So set up an email sequence. That is again, just a given, do it. Uh, don't even think about not doing it. And once you set them up, you don't have to do anything as well. So that's passive once it's set up. The last thing is gonna be the ManyChat review follow-up. Now this ties into the ranking methods, but basically you're gonna to need to learn about how to launch with ManyChat and Facebook ads if you wanna succeed in 2020. Again, this is something that I go into great depth in my course. It's probably about six hours for this entire module. Um, but for here, for now, I will just say that the, the launching methodology that I recommend you use is gonna be a combination of using Facebook ads and ManyChat and rebates. So what you're actually gonna be doing is ranking in two phases, where in the first phase, you're running these Facebook ads, driving people who are clicking on those ads to ManyChat. Through that ManyChat flow, you're actually getting them to click on a ranking URL that will then direct the customers to buy the product and rank for these keywords that you selected or one or more of those keywords that you selected. And the idea is that you're getting up to somewhere in the rankings, whether it's page two, page three, it might be even be to the bottom of page one, but you're gonna get your product to that ranking pretty quickly doing this. Uh, and then in phase two, you're actually gonna then switch that over using the same flow, but now instead of them clicking on this URL that directly goes to that keyword, your customers, these customers that are coming through ManyChat and Facebook are actually gonna go and have to look through Amazon themselves to find the product. Now, again, this is much easier if, they're on, if it's on page one already, but page two, page three is okay as well. Uh, and then what you're gonna do is rebate them after the fact. So this method at the moment is incredibly powerful. There are a lot of sort of implications and it may not be effective in a year's time, in two years time, but right now it works very well. And not only are you gonna get very quickly ranked for your product, for the keywords that you wanna rank for, here's the kicker. You can also follow up through ManyChat for those same customers and get a pretty high percentage of reviews. So if you're not doing this, you definitely should be. And this is at the moment, one of our primary ranking methods. It's not the primary or the only ranking method. Um, but it's one of the ways that we're getting our products ranked quickly at the moment. So the next way that you're launching your product is actually using PPC. So I split these into two. One is the foundations campaigns and these are the campaigns that I talk about in my in-depth PPC tutorial. So these campaigns are basically ongoing campaigns that you're gonna optimize over time. You're gonna get these to be profitable campaigns over time. So set them up and then never turn them off. And again, if you want detail, go check out that tutorial. Second one is gonna be a series of PPC push campaigns. Now these are temporary campaigns. This is where you're pushing these one to three keywords and you're paying a lot of money to bid very highly for these specific keywords. And these campaigns only do that single thing. All their, their only purpose is to rank your product for those keywords. So these are gonna cost you a lot of money, but it, again, it's an investment. As you get the keyword ranking, what you'll see is that your organic sales start to take over. And as those organic sales start to take over, you should actually start to stabilize at a high ranking, particularly as your reviews are accumulating. And then you can start to turn these push campaigns either down or off completely once you have that rank and it's stable. And that's really the launching process. There is one other really common question that is how do you control pricing? So this pricing strategy um, that we like to employ, it works very effectively for us, is to simply start low, so around about break even, and then <laughs> check out this video for an in-depth explanation of why this works but you start at low around break even, and then basically you compensating as you're gaining reviews, that gives you room to start increasing your price above break even. And of course the end result is that you end up where the price, the, the price where you want to be, which should be let's say 30, 40, 50% above your break even price. And we think it's pretty, pretty normal to estimate that you'll get there around about day 30. So that's again, if you're accumulating reviews and your conversion rate is going up, uh, one month in to get to your full price is quite reasonable. And if you feel like that's kind of hard to do at the start, then I urge you to just consider everything in this launch and ranking phase as the final step or the final stage of investment that you need to do. First, you're investing your effort and you're investing your time. Then you invested some money into the purchase order. This is a final investment of time as well, but definitely of money in marketing costs to get your product shown and visible and, and getting basically the visibility that it needs to establish itself as a profitable product. So it absolutely can and will pay off, but you need to not be afraid at this stage to do things like launch a break even, to start at the low price, to not be afraid to run that PPC push campaign that may be not making money at the start, 
to run those Facebook ads as well, because they cost money, to do all of this stuff and set everything up correctly and then back yourself with the improvements that you made and the value adding to <laughs> go through this entire process. And then at the end of the day, you come out with a ranked product. So it's organically ranking in Amazon search engine. You're getting sales through that organic ranking, which are profitable sales. And then here's, there are a couple of things that you do here. Firstly, celebrate. You've just done an amazing thing, which is to get through this entire process. It may have taken you weeks. It probably took you months. It may have taken you even longer than that, but you're here now and that's something to be proud of. I remember the, the first time that I got here with a product that was successful. It was an absolutely amazing feeling. Then you need to get back to work, evaluate how that product is doing. What can you learn from it? Then you need to reorder that product because chances are if you ranked and it's doing well, you're probably gonna stock out. And by the way, that's a completely normal part of doing this for the first time is that you should probably expect to stock out for a period of time if this product is doing well. That's okay, just reorder as fast as you can with the stock that you think you'll need and get that product back in so that you don't have to launch again. Uh, and then research new products and start enjoying the cash flow as it's coming in. And there is one last thing before I go, I hope you've found this video incredibly valuable so far. This is the entire process from product research to sourcing and shipping to launching and ranking, as well as all of the other things that you need to do in the background. I don't know if there is a video like this that explains it uh, in this step-by-step -step way. So I hope that you found this video valuable. Please, right now, if you are watching this and you've gotten value from this and you're gonna go and download this maybe and use it, if you are still watching this and you're finding this valuable, make sure if you haven't already, smash that like button. Show me that these videos are worth making uh, as well, if you smash the like button, it'll help this video get shown to other people so that they can hopefully as well start their own life-changing Amazon businesses like I've been able to do, like I want you to do. That's really it. Remember that if you wanna dive down into more of this, um, each of these steps in incredible detail, then check out the FBA Freedom Accelerator, which is my entire course, which covers all of this and a lot more actually. There is more to go after this, but this is really how you get that first product going and making you money. Um, again, if you want more detail and you want mentorship, uh, for me, then check out that first link in the video description. Hope you found this video incredibly valuable. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'm gonna be putting more videos just like this out in the future. Make sure to click that notification bell so that you get them as they come out. And I will see you in the next video.